Hello everybody and welcome back to the F2 show by Inside F2. It's our first episode of the year and what better way to start the year than by talking to a Formula 2 driver for 2024, Joshua Dirksen. Josh, thanks for joining us. Uh, firstly, how does that sound, uh, Formula 2 driver for 2024? Oh, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, yeah, as well, even more of a pleasure to be the first one uh, on this year. Yeah, it sounds just incredible. It's just crazy to... Uh, to be driving that Formula 2 car and yeah, just really su super excited about this year. How long did it take to sink in when you signed that contract at the end of last year? Did it take a while to, to, for it to feel real? Yeah, I mean, I, I cannot believe it, uh, to be honest. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, the moment we did the announcement, uh, I just couldn't keep smiling for the whole day, you know, and uh, it's just, it was just crazy to think, okay, I'm Formula 2 driver now, I'm going to drive a Formula 2 car, you know. Uh, I've never thought about that in the past years, you know, to be in this position. So it was just uh, just so big. It's just so crazy that, um, yeah, just uh, the smile just couldn't go out of my face. It's the, it's the premier feeder series right behind Formula One, right? It's uh, almost the, the, the pinnacle of feeder series. So it's, uh, it's a big deal, isn't it? So um, we've had loads of questions coming from the fans. I'm going to ask as many of them as possible as we, as we go through. Uh, but the first one is from Aaron, who asked really simply, what's the one thing you're most looking forward to about racing in Formula Two? Well, the one thing I'm looking forward to is, first of all, I think the new tracks where I will be driving from the 14 racetracks, I think uh, five racetracks are new for me, like uh, Baku, Qatar, um, Melbourne, Silverstone. Uh, so basically uh, driving in those tracks and, also, and of course, um, just uh, the, the feeling of the races, you know, because it's going to be a long race, one hour with the pit stop. That's something new for me as well. So like um, it's going to be a cool experience to do like a uh, tire management and try to predict the race uh, about and with a strategy, you know, so it's going to be uh, many cool things happening that, that this year. How do, how do you prepare for things like that when you talk about strategy and you talk about pit stops? Is there a way you can prepare for them? Well, yeah, I think just uh, with the simulator, you can practice it with the team. Uh, just trying to get uh, some basic knowledge from there. But I think, yeah, you, you just learn it on a track with the experience. Then you just uh, start getting the little tricks for that. Um, you've obviously made the bold decision to jump straight from Frecker to Formula 2. Um, talk us through the decision to move straight to Formula 2, because obviously I'm assuming Formula 3 could have been an option, but it's a, it's a decision to go to Formula 2, right? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, uh, in our ideal plan, we would have liked to do F3. That was uh, the first idea. Um, but yeah, sadly, we were not um, getting the budget in the early enough, so we were like, uh, we, we couldn't get a seat. And then uh, when the budget came, we were like, all right, this is interesting. This is a really big thing. You know, F2, you don't get this chance every day. And um, it's, it's as well with uh, with some guys that I know already from the team. So I, I know that we will go along pretty well. And of course, it's a new car, you know, new car for everybody in 2024. So I was like, okay, this can give us uh, some good chance, you know, because it's a new car for everybody. Everybody has to develop the car again. So I think it was just a unique opportunity which uh, we had to take. Definitely. Who was it that came to you with the idea at first of Formula 2? Was it your management? And uh, yeah, how, how did that conversation happen? When was the first time you were, you were informed that Formula 2 could be an option? Well, actually, uh, the offer came to us. Uh, we did not have the idea. So okay. they contacted us. And um, it was when they contacted, when PHM contacted us and sent us the proposal, we were like, wow. Okay, this is interesting. This is cool. And um, yeah, so then we, we started to have a think about it and we said, okay, yeah, this this is a unique opportunity. Uh, you don't drive a F2 car every day. You don't get this offer every day. So we had to take it. If, if that's the case, why, why did you give Formula 3? Because obviously you tested uh, for a Formula 3 car at Imola in the, in the Formula 3 season test, didn't you, with PHM? Was that simply just to um, get your foot in the door at PHM and get, and get used to the team? Or was there, yeah, what was the, what was the thought process behind that? Yeah, to be honest, it was already to to know a bit the team, the how the team works, and uh, just get some experience as well on an F3 car because it's a really cool car as well, a really quick one. So it was just everything, uh, just to get some some uh, knowledge in already. And what did you learn from that experience? Obviously, we'll talk about the Formula Two test in a minute, which you'll uh, I'm sure you learnt more from. But what did you learn from the Formula Three test? Well, what did I learn? First of all. Uh, to adapt quickly to uh, to a new car, to new conditions, and especially 
to really add up quickly because the the this tires has so much tire degradation so uh you really have only like one or two push laps you know so i had to learn uh how to use them uh, on one lap, you know, and really maximize that lap. And as well, just um, getting getting used to a quicker car, you know, with a lot more of cornering speed than the Freca, a lot more of power, the DRS, and uh, all these extra features you have already on the steering wheel, which you didn't have in the in the in the Freca, for example, with the throttle map, clutch map, the practice starts, you know. So there was so much, so much to learn. And the Formula 2 test, obviously, that was at the end of the season. I'm sure that was a highlight for you for, for 2023. Um, yeah, how did, how did the car feel during the test? I mean, you, there were some, some, you know, well-experienced drivers that you beat during the test, right? I know you tested and we can't read too much into it, but surely you've got to be happy with that. And what, what did you learn from the Formula 2 test? Yeah, the Formula 2 test, uh, I think I learned a lot because it was, yeah, three days of testing. And the F3, you had only two days. Um, in the three days, yeah, I basically learned all the basic, um, how do you say, basic procedures, you know, on how to uh, warm up properly the tires, how to warm up properly the brakes, because now we have some uh, carbon fiber brakes, uh, carbon brakes, sorry. And uh, so you have to treat them diff- differently, you know. Um, I had to learn that. I had to learn how the team works, you know, how, uh, all their internal procedures, you know, uh, tire management, pit stops. And yeah, as well, like to play with the throttle map and clutch map on the practice starts and all this stuff, like, all that stuff. Um, and especially the long runs, you know, especially like the tire management and uh, how to feel the tire, you know, because sometimes you want to push more at the beginning because you feel the tire is has really good grip, but you have to think uh, on the future of the tires, you know, on 10 laps after that, 15 laps where they are going to degrade a lot more. So uh, all of that kind of stuff, you know, but uh, that F2 test was really productive uh, and especially it helped me as well to 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 learn the team better, you know, to, to know the guys better and um, just getting some mileage in the F2. Um, so, yeah, just to get a, a good feeling already for 2024. How was the power when you put the beams down for the full tire for the first time? How, how, how powerful was that car? I'm assuming it's quite a jump up from what you're used to in, in, in regional, right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a big jump. I mean, if you compare the from the regional has two hundred eighty horsepower and the F two has six hundred twenty, so it's more than double of the power. You know, uh, it's it's really crazy. I mean, the tire as well has a lot more of grip, so you can just throw it down; it will grip and it just accelerates so much. Uh, it's 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 crazy how quickly the speed goes up. You know how quickly you can reach the uh, two hundred ninety, three hundred k uh, k. Um, but yeah, it's just an incredible experience. As a, as a driver, are you are you conditioned? Because as a general member of the public, who I've done a bit of karting here and there, but nothing serious. I think jumping in a car that is considerably quicker would scare the life out of me. To be honest with you, do, do you do you ever get scared when you jump into a new car, or is, are you just programmed as racing drivers to you know you you don't get scared? It's just it's just excitement. It's just the pure thrill of it. <laughs> More than more than scared, I think it's just you're cautious at the beginning, you know, because yeah. you know, okay, it's a new car. You don't know how the car is gonna react, how the tire, uh, how the car behaves. So, like on the first laps, you're like a bit cautious just to try to get some some experience in, some feelings, and to know how the car is feeling, what the car does in each circumstance, you know. So it's like, uh, yes, especially uh, when I jump into the car and I didn't drive yet. I think that's the moment where I'm like, uh, wow, this is happening, you know? And then it's like, we have a bit more of uh, um, some emotions. Then as soon as you start, then yeah, uh, you go into the racing modus and then you try just to get the feeling. Uh, like like I said, just be cautious on the first laps, get some nice feeling in, and then you uh, start to build up lap by lap your confidence with the car and try to get some, uh, yeah, just try different different things with the car and then you just get uh, some some better confidence with the car and then you know what it's going to do. Yeah, definitely. So Rachel has asked, what do you think the key challenges will be jumping into the to Formula 2 car from, from Freca? Is it, I don't know, for example, is, is it the weight? Is it the power? Do you have to change your driving style at all? What's the, what's the, what's the key challenge, do you feel, or the biggest challenge for next season? Well, let's see. With the new car, uh, nobody knows yet how the car will behave, and uh, especially with the new aerodynamics and stuff. Um, but I think 
from my from my little experience now in the F2, I think uh, like always it will be key uh, to start the weekend strong. You know, to have a, a good baseline, um, to have a good balance uh, from from the start go. So um, and then from there, uh, develop the car slowly. You know, like step by step. Um, because yeah, we only have one free practice, so it's it's not a lot, a lot of time. And of the, of that free practice, you maybe do maybe six push laps or something because you don't want to use too much the tires because you're gonna need those tires for the race. So yeah, it's it's a whole compromise. But I think yeah, to, uh, to start strong on the free practice with some good balance, I think that that would be really important. Forty-five minutes of free, of free practice is nowhere near enough, is it? For uh, particularly for the tracks, where, like Bahrain, for example, you haven't been before, and it's learning the track as well, right? It's uh, yeah, that's extremely difficult in such a short period of time, as well as learning the new car, right? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, luckily we have the preseason testing in Bahrain, so at least that track, I will have uh, some knowledge already. But like uh, for Baku or Qatar, Melbourne. Uh, Silverstone is going to be a bit tricky for me, you know, I will not have a lot of time. Um, but yeah, uh, therefore I will do some hard work in the sim, just try to get some uh, good feelings there and then try to um, adapt that to the real life. Definitely. Um, you've mentioned the new car, the new Formula 2 car for next season. Um, Julian asks, how have you been preparing for the new Formula 2 car? Um, and uh, yeah, I guess a, a build on from that from me. Uh, what, what kind of training have you been doing? And uh, how does your training change from preparing for a Frecker season to pre pre uh, preparing for a Formula 2 season? Well, yeah, in the phys physical aspects, of course, the training has gotten a lot heavier than usual because... It's a big step, big jump, you know, from the Freca, you drive 30 minutes of, you have a 30 minutes race and F2, you have 45 minutes and one hour. So, uh, plus the car itself is more physical than the Freca, you know? So it's, uh, overall, uh, I have, I have to improve my, my physical aspect. I mean, I, I felt quite good on the three test days in Abu Dhabi, uh, but yeah, of course I want to improve a lot more so I can, uh, let's say easily um complete the race you know because uh the easier it is the more focus you will have as well uh, for the race you know um on the physical aspect yeah just really hard training uh, i was now one month in paraguay uh for for christmas and for a new year of course that time was uh full of training i basically didn't have the chance to rest a lot because the season is starting quite early uh compared to what i was used to on the freca i think we normally started in april and now we start with the first race on end of February, so it's a lot earlier. And um, so, yeah, the, pre the preparation was really harder in Paraguay as well with the simulator. I tried to drive as much as possible I could on the sim, you know, and try to develop as well my sim uh, with the F2 model I have there. Try to make it as close as possible to, to real life, you know, so I can uh, use my simulator as well, like for uh, proper training. So. I was just, uh, yeah, basically uh, every day just thinking about motorsport and trying to, to improve in every aspect I can. It becomes your life, right? Absolutely. Is there is there a specific race that you train for? I guess it would have been Zandvoort, but obviously Zandvoort isn't on the calendar this year. Is there a specific race that you train for, uh, particularly with the neck, right? There's, uh, maybe Jeddah, maybe? Or... Yeah, I mean, I think this year there will be many races where it's going to be uh, really demanding physically. Uh, like Jeddah, uh, the first uh, racetrack that comes to my mind as well is Hungary. You know, we will drive there in July, I think. So it's going to be really hot. And uh, Budapest is just a track which has basically only corners, almost no straights. So you're uh, continuously uh, working hard there. Um, but my training is consists basically on always trying to give my best, you know, not like uh, uh, give a bit more now that there's a coming a race. There's coming a race which is maybe a bit more difficult and if it's austria for example red bull ring i will train less now for, uh, my training plan is not like that i always try to give my best to be as uh, as prepared as possible for every race you know i always want to improve myself and uh, that's that's got the goal at the end as a driver do you do you have a preference as to who your teammate's going to be? Would you rather have someone who is a bit of a veteran of the sport, is quite experienced, someone that you could learn a lot of their experience? Or would you rather have someone that you, you, you know that you've got a chance of beating every single weekend? I mean, obviously, you think you, you're going to beat your teammate every weekend, right? But would you, would you rather have someone who, um, yeah, you think that you can go into a weekend and you're going to beat them? What's, what's your mindset in terms of your teammate? 
Yeah. I personally, I always like uh, to have a, a driver that is more experienced than me on the team because then I can learn from them a lot. I like the, the challenge, you know, uh, because at the end, I want to grow. I want to be better. I want to be in the Formula One championship. So therefore, I need to learn a lot. You know, it doesn't help me just to win now on junior uh, single seaters and then just arrive to uh, maybe a big championship or F1 and not having these experiences or, or not learning the things you should have learned on the on the previous years, you know. So I always prefer now to have some competitive teammates, some a teammate that really makes my life hard, let's say, because then I can learn from them. I can I can grow and at the end be better and then be prepared be prepared for uh, for uh, for any opportunity that comes in the future. You know, definitely, I like that. Good answer. Okay, um, what one track are you most looking forward to this season? Is there one that's standing out for you? Yeah, uh, I'm really curious about Qatar because uh, I personally, I really love uh, fast corners. I love tracks that have fast corners like Mugello, for example. I And that track usually uh, went well, went pretty well for me on the on the past in F4. And I just love fast flowing tracks, you know, and Qatar basically has only fast corners. So I'm really excited and really looking forward to it. But as well, um, Melbourne, I really love as well. Uh, because I just remember playing on the PlayStation, you know, on career mode F1. The first race was always Melbourne. It was so cool. I don't know why. <laughs> and um, Silverstone as well. It's I really love that track. Uh, the fast corners there as well. And I've never driven there yet. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to these tracks. You're going to be on the F1 game this year. Is that something that, like, excites you, the fact that you're going to be on the game? Wow, true. That's true. Wow. Yeah, that, that's cool. That's really cool. Like... Um, <laughs> That's nice because I, I just remember from little, you know, I was playing F1 games and having the F2 there, dreaming to be there one day. And now that you say that, yeah, that's true. I will be there. Well, wow, that's crazy. That's cool. Do you, do you still play the <laughs> F1 game or do you not get any time anymore? And, and if you do, do, will you play as yourself on the F1 game? <laughs> no, sadly, I don't play it anymore because luckily I have the chance to play it in real life. You know, that's, I think, a bit cooler than on the PlayStation. Um no, but uh, yeah, lately I, I I don't have time anymore for that. You know, it's just getting so so much busier. You know, uh, just trying to improve and getting better every day. But if I could, yes, of course I would play myself. <laughs> I would. That's the first thing I would do. It's just it's just a cool thing. You know. I love that. I love that. Um, Zoe asks, uh, how does it feel to represent the nation of Paraguay on a Grand Prix weekend? You know, to my knowledge, you're going to be the first Paraguayan on a on a Grand Prix weekend in 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 in, in, in yeah in the motorsport um, on a, in a Formula One weekend. That's got to be quite cool, right? Yeah, that's that's really cool. I mean, for me, it's 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 a, it's an honor, you know, to first of all represent my country because I'm as well the first Paraguayan driving in F2, you know, and uh, Paraguay. Is a uh, is a country which is well really strong in rally, but not as that much in uh, in circuit. So like uh, single seaters or you know everything that has to do with asphalt. Uh, so to be there and I, as well like in Paraguay we have basically only one go kart track in the whole country and one race track in the whole country. You know, and uh, to come from there to be now in F two and being able to represent my country is really special you know and uh yeah it's it's just it's just really cool you know you know to be the first one and just looking back and remembering how i was dreaming about this and now being there and uh yeah just representing not 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 only my dream but as well the dream of all of the paraguayan people you know because the support i get from paraguay is just massive from all the people you know i can tell you like 95 percent of all the comments are positive are always uh, uh, motivating me, you know, inspiring me, just keep pushing, you know. So uh, to have the privilege to be me representing this country is just, uh, it's just special. And you've got a big following in Paraguay, haven't you? How did the news go down when they found out you were going to be in Formula 2? <laughs> that was crazy, man. I mean, my, my phone didn't stop to, uh, to ring and to get notifications the whole day. You know, I, I literally couldn't I couldn't enter the social media. I was just exploding so much, and the people, the people were just ultra happy. You know, uh, uh, that 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 made me even happier because 
I could share my happiness with the people and they were happy as well. And so the, just feeling the support, it, it's, it's crazy, you know, and, uh, I literally couldn't use my phone for the next five hours. At least it was just, it was just crazy. I love that. Well deserved as well. Well deserved. So, um, that's, that's the serious <laughs> questions. Can I, can I ask you a few and less serious questions so that the fans can get to know the real Josh Dirksen? Yeah, of course. Send it. All right, let's do it. So first question, have you got a, a pre-race song that you listen to that gets, gets you going before a race? Wow. Oh, pre-race song. Yes. I had many in the past. Uh, yes, I have one. It's called, um, I think it was called Lion. Okay. Uh, I don't want, no, I, I don't remember from who it was. I think it was from Elevation Worship, I think it's called. But Lion, it was just, it's just such a cool song for me because it's like, the song itself is just like building up like a whole scene, you know, and you, you just feel like in a movie, you know, you feel just like strong and wow. And yeah, I just love to hear that music before jumping into the car. Love that. You, you'll have to send it to me after and we can put the link in the description below for people to listen to. So, yeah, yeah. I can. I can send it to you. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite form of social media? Is it Instagram, TikTok? What, what's your what's your go to? Um, yeah, Instagram, I think. Nice. What, what's your dream road car? Oh, from little, from very little. I remember when I got my for the first time, uh, PlayStation 3, uh, we had the Gran Turismo game. Yeah, no. and uh, the car I always loved was I think it's the Audi R8 if I'm correct. Good choice. Um, yeah. That car, but now with the time, I would really love to have uh, Pagani as well. I don't know why I just love those cars. Yeah, nice. Pagani Sonda. When you're in Formula One, you'll be able to drive around in one of them. <laughs> yeah, I would love to get a Pagani. That's that's for sure. That would be cool. Who was the last person that you were starstruck by when you met them? No, I mean. I don't remember really well, but the last person, the last famous and important person I've seen, I think, was the the president of Paraguay. So I have to go with him. That's that's a cool friend to have. That's a good friend to have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean, it's it's really cool to meet the president, you know, and to have him on the postseason test. I think that's that's something something special. I don't know if that happened before, but uh, yeah, just to share the patient the passion with with him it's just crazy you know so they can feel it as well what we are experiencing and uh, because normally when you try to explain to people what you feel while driving or what you feel when you see these races in, in real life it's a lot different than uh when you really experience it you know so uh that he could come and experience that by itself it's it's just uh amazing and i think he really enjoyed that um who who was your idol growing up Yes, when I started to watch F1, my idol was uh, Sebastian Vettel. I just uh, I was just supporting him a lot, and um, yeah, so he was basically my first favorite driver. Love that. And final question: Who, Who's your favorite Formula One driver now? Do you have one, or is it was it Seb until he went? Uh, to be honest, I think right now, with the years going by, I always loved so many drivers. I always loved. The special characteristic of each driver, but if you had give me to choose one, Charles Leclerc. Do you admire him as a driver? Like his driving style? Yeah, I, I admire him as a driver, as a person as well. Uh, mm. I had the privilege as well to take my picture with him. It was just so cool. And yeah, but I, I really like him, his personality, and as well his driving style, you know, how quick he is. Definitely. No, it's a good answer. I like that. Listen, Josh, it's been great to talk to you. Um, just before we go, do you have a message for your fans out there ahead of the new season? Just first of all, thank you for the whole support. And yeah, just uh, just letting them know that I will give my best, that uh, they can keep supporting me like they do, because I love that. It's just so cool. And uh, yeah, just uh, keep on keep on watching the races. They're, they are going to be for sure a lot of interesting races. And yeah, just uh, I, I want to share with them as much as possible of this dream I'm living. And yeah, just really thank, thankful to them for the big support they, they are giving me. Listen, Josh, that's great. Thank you so much from all of us here in Inside F2 for your time today. And uh, yeah, wishing you the best of luck for the rest of the season. Uh, thank you very much, babe. It's a pleasure for me. And yeah, uh, really excited to start this, this new season already.